In the 1980s and 90s, there was a huge war, but probably not the kind you're thinking of. A war to turn millions of people towards one soft drink. I'm of course talking about the intense rivalry between Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Two of the biggest companies on earth waging an all-out battle to capture people's imagination and dominate the other as the coolest drink on the block. To strap in for this wild, incredible story of how Coca-Cola and Pepsi vied for world domination. For decades now, Coke has been dominating the market. But that hasn't always been the case. Pepsi and Coke have always been battling it out for the top spot, mostly through their marketing campaigns. The marketing of both companies appealed to the time and the age and created such a rivalry that marketing gurus across the globe stand in awe of it even today. Actually, we still teach it in business schools around the world. Sometimes one brand is more successful than the other. That's why this is such a fantastic brand battle over the decades. And I understand how we might have to time travel back in history. Since its inception in the 1880s, Coke sales were steadily rising throughout the 1930s and 40s, mostly due to its stellar marketing campaigns. Coke's Santa Claus ads were a big hit as a drink that would bring you joy around the year. Unlike most brands at the time, both Pepsi and Coke didn't try to sell the effectiveness or quality of the product at first. They focused more on the values that their product had to offer. By the time World War II came around, Coke was everywhere. It was sold on all street corners and was advertised on billboards and posters. But the biggest boost was during the war. Cola companies struggled because of the sugar rationing that happened at that time. Coke's then president, Robert W. Woodruff, did something unprecedented. He convinced the White House that Coke was a necessity to the troops and should be exempt from rationing, something that Pepsi wasn't afforded. And so Coke was shipped to all American troops. And obviously, its sales soared. And sadly, while Coke was thriving, PepsiCo was struggling financially, going through several restructurings. In 1965, it merged with Frito-Lay Inc. to become PepsiCo Inc. But then the cola was escalated and intensified as a new means of advertising was born, the television. And Pepsi took full advantage of it, plastering amazing ads across TV screens. They focused on family values, having kids drinking Pepsi in most of their ads. Like this one, where kids would jig with Michael Jackson while drinking a Pepsi. Coke decided that they needed to strike back. And so they launched a commercial, which many believe to be one of the best ever produced. They gathered young people, all holding Coke bottles, to show a sign of solidarity with the peace efforts and for unity. However, this seemed to come a little too late as Pepsi's shares were steadily climbing. And so it was here that the true cola wars officially began. In 1975, Pepsi came up with one of their most ingenious campaigns yet and threatened Coke's reign at the top. It was called the Pepsi Challenge. It was an ad in which people were seen drinking from two bottles. One was a Pepsi and the other was obviously supposed to be Coke. Through the ad, it showed how much people loved Pepsi more than Coke. It was one of the first times that a brand directly used its competitor in its own marketing. The Pepsi Challenge was not just a marketing gimmick. It was true, said David Gressing, author of I'd Like the World to Buy a Coke. According to Gressing, internal studies at Coca-Cola confirmed what the Pepsi challenge was trying to show, which is that if you just look at the taste of the beverage, consumers preferred Pepsi. This was a big hit to Coke. It still dominated sales, but their market shares were decreasing as Pepsi's rose. Coke needed to step up its game. So in 1982, it released its first spin-off drink, Diet Coke. Introducing Diet Coke. This is the one from Coca-Cola. You call the taste with just one calorie. Just for the taste, just of, for the taste of it. On April 23rd, 1985, Coca-Cola announced it was changing their signature formula to launch a new product that would later be known as New Coke. The aim was to make it sweeter and similar to Pepsi, as the blind test suggested that people preferred that. But this backfired. 
people were livid that they couldn't have the original Coke flavor anymore. And this news dominated the cycle for months. I don't like it. Have you tried the new Coke? Yes. What do you think of it? Don't like it. I'm very disappointed. I think we've lost the American tradition. Uh, the, uh, the, the real taste is gone. Obviously, Pepsi happily capitalized on the situation. Pepsi even declared that they'd won the Cola Wars and gave everyone who worked there a holiday. They then released a not so subtle commercial in which a young girl orders a Pepsi but is secretly given a Coke and then, in a Marlon Brando godfather voice, asks the guy to make amends. Come here. I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm going to tell you. We both know I ordered a Pepsi Cola. And now you've insulted me and my entire family by offering me this, this, whatever it is. But being a civilized person, I'd like to give you a chance to make amends. Capisce? Yeah. Here you go. The bartender then hands her a Pepsi. It was just genius and one of the first times that the Coke logo was actually used in a Pepsi ad. But by this time, there were too many Coke loyalists. In fact, they organized grassroots organizations like Old Cola Drinkers of America across the US and petitioned for the company to change the recipe back. On July 11th, 1985, a mere three months after the cola giant announced the formula change, Coca-Cola announced it would bring back the old formula under the brand name Coca-Cola Classic. They did continue to sell new Coke under the Coca-Cola banner in hopes that the sales would eventually pick up. It's wild, but in hindsight, this debacle was a blessing in disguise, as Coke fans were ravenous for the old recipe, and hence, Coke's overall sales shot up. Since that time, Coke and Pepsi have constantly been trying to one-up each other through their ads. Like this 1996 Pepsi ad, which had the tagline, nothing official about it, as a dig at Coke, who was at the time the official sponsor of the World Cup. The idea was that it doesn't matter, either way, people prefer Pepsi. Here's one where a kid uses Pepsis to reach the Coke can at the top shelf. And here's one where a kid lines up Cokes, this time to reach the Pepsi button on the vending machine. Lots of times, they've even stolen each other's ambassadors, like Amir Khan, who was in both Coke and Pepsi ads in the 90s. And more than anything, it just became a norm for both companies to take shots at each other in their respective ads. The race to see which cola was the better one seeped into another race at the time. Booster ignition and liftoff. When the shuttle Challenger blasts off tomorrow, it will begin a new space race. On board will be two specially designed soft drink cans, one from Coke, the other from Pepsi, allowing astronauts to drink a carbonated beverage in the weightlessness of space for the first time. Not just that, but both have also tried to dominate areas past that of colas. Coke bought Columbia Pictures, Pepsi bought food franchises like Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut. And of course, both created new beverages under their name. In 2017, Pepsi hit its biggest roadblock in its attempt to be number one in this widely panned and hated Kendall Jenner ad which many believe to be an appropriation of other cultures, specifically the Black Lives Movement, all for commercial gain. Pepsi had to eventually issue a public statement apologizing for the ad and pulled it from all their marketing. Today, the war rages on, with ads featuring pop stars, cricketers, actors, and many more. Hell, people I know strongly associate themselves as Coke people or Pepsi people. And while Diet Coke was named by the Wall Street Journal as the winner of the Cola Wars, there's no end in sight to this massive rivalry between two undeniably household names. But most people agree that it's one of the most intense brand rivalries of all time. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, don't forget to like, share, and comment below. Tell us which you'd prefer, Pepsi or Coke. I'm more of a Maza man myself, to be honest. But we'd love to hear from you.